What's up, snake fans? It's Monday morning here at Palumbo's Pythons and Boas, and I hope you guys are having a great day. Hopefully it was a great weekend for you. We had a little drama last night here. I came into the snake room, I'm gonna show you some footage, and there was an open cage, and it was a Burmese Python open cage at that. You know, I wanna give, give you guys a little bit of a, a lesson on what it takes to hold and to house a Burmese Python here in Florida. There were some rules, there were some laws, and then we're gonna take a look and see exactly what happened. Stay tuned, come on into the snake room. So I came into my snake room, and here's my, you know, all my big snake cages. And down here, obviously, I have my female Burmese python. And you can see I have my, her tag on there. That's my hypo granite, 100% uh, head albino, and 100% head green. On there, my little tag. And this is a six foot vision cage, the big one of the bigger ones. And by Florida law, I have a class three conditional license, which they require here to have the snake, which has a few stipulations. Number one, I have to put this on the outside of the cage where it says Burmese Python, Python bivitatis, and it has to say dangerous reptile. That's just, they want that on there. So people know if they ever come in here or whatever. Then you also have a lock, have to have a lock on the cage. So my cages have cage locks and all my cages have the cage locks, but berms have to have the cage locks. And then you also have to have a facility where they come and inspect and, you know, they find that it's, it's, a, it's a good facility where it's escape proof, you know, and I have good doors and stuff like that. And that's not an issue. So I come into the snake room and this, this lock essentially is on the ground. I see it just laying on the ground there and, and the thing's open. Now, I don't know if she jimmied it or if I just didn't lock the thing properly or... You know, these snakes are big, you know, they're, they're strong. Maybe it was left open a tad bit. I sometimes have a guy come in here and help me clean. I, I don't know what happened. But let's cut to the footage and let's see exactly what I found last night. So I knew she was here someplace. I'm like, where could a snake that big go? And I just see, like, I just think, see things knocked over. I saw a tub. One of these vision tubs was over here was, was like this. It was like, uh, it, was like it was open like that. Luckily, the funny thing was the snake didn't even come out. It was actually one of these, actually. It was like this. This, this, kid, this was open like this. The snake didn't even try to get out. So I'm assuming the, the Burmese didn't escape that long ago. And then I figured, well, let me look on top. I said, Burbs can't climb, can they? Yes, they can. Yes, they can. And there she is. And she doesn't have the greatest, you know, temperament. She can be a little as Brian Barczyk would say, cantankerous. <laughs> There's my little nasty girl. Did you have fun? Did you have fun going for a little uh, jaunt around my snake room here? Did you have fun escaping for the night? And climbing, I, I can only imagine the damage you did climbing this fishing rack right here. Holy mackerel. I'm sure you terrorized all the snakes here. So you gonna, are you gonna let me bring you back in? Are you going to go willing, or are you not going to go gently into this good night? I think you'd be much happier in your cage tonight. What do you think? Probably not. You're sitting on top of some heat coiling up there, so you're probably feeling pretty good. So it's going to be fun trying to get her down. Unfortunately, there's no one here, although I do have a security camera up there, so maybe the security camera can capture this footage of me trying to get her down. Hopefully, I won't get bit. I got her in there. I'm exhausted. I'm sweating. I'm, I'm like uh, uh, completely sweating to death. My hair is a mess. I'm sweating. It's like 12 midnight too. I really don't want to be doing this now. You got to take a look at this, at this cage, which she did to this cage. She, she decided, I, I, luckily, you know, she, she's, ever since she gave birth, she's actually had a very good personality, but she decided she wanted to wrap around the vision cage. So I had to push the tubs out and I had a manhandler to get her out of there, but 
Um, she was good. She didn't snap. She nothing. She was just like playing. Uh, I, I've never seen a, a snake change their personality so much from before they got, you know, pregnant and gravid to after. She's like a different snake. She's really kind of pleasant, I gotta say. She like became a puppy dog. <laughs> Thank God for me, right? Because otherwise I never would have gotten her back in. All right, just, just one of the many dramas that goes on here at Palumbo's Pythons and Bows. We got some uh, fresh hatched babies here Monday morning. And we love to see that, don't we? Now this was a breeding between a Mandarin male, ball python, bred to a Coral Glow pastel. Now the Coral Glow and the banana, everyone says are the same, and they pretty much are, but I, I'll tell you one thing. In my experience breeding Mandarins to bananas and Mandarins to Coral Glows, I see a big difference. So I don't know if that means anything. All right, let's, let's take a look and see what we got. One of these eggs hasn't hatched yet. It always sucks when you get a normal. <laughs> <laughs> but you know it happens you get normals you know they, they come it's not the odds of hitting a normal are, are, are now higher than hitting a, a, a three gene animal but they happen this is a nice looking normal though very nice so we got one normal and then we got two really and really stellar ones let's put them over here okay I believe they're both Mandarin Coral glows. Look at that. You want to see orange? Put mandarin into a into a banana or coral glow. I'm telling you, I have banana coral glows. I'm going to show you one. They're definitely orange. They're not this orange. And last year I produced also some coral glow mandarins, and they are just exquisite. I don't know if this. If it, maybe there is a slight difference in the gene. I don't know. I'm just telling you, the interactions that I see with Coral Glow line of, of uh, ball pythons mixed with Mandarin are more extreme than the response I see to the banana gene. The banana gene tends to be more yellow and just have some uh, red outlining. These are just, I mean, look at the head. I mean, I don't know if the camera's picking it up. The head is like really, really orange. Look at that. And the body's like purple. And then you got the oranges and the yellow. The yellow's normal and the purples will come from banana anyway, but those orange accents, you know, are just insane. Those are from the Mandarin. So it looks like we hit two Mandarin bananas. Or I should say, I almost slipped up there. Mandarin coral gloves. I keep the name separate for the different lines I have, but you know, once again, it's hard to tell a coral glow from a banana. And everyone is, everyone, says that the genes are the same. And I tend to agree, but for some reason, when I mix these mandarins with these coral glows, they look better than when I mix them in. It could just be, it couldn't just be the polymorphic difference of the mother that I have is a good mother. I mean, is a good representation of that coral glow banana gene. And when she mixes with mandarin, she just gets better response. I don't know, but look at it. I mean, you see it, look at those oranges. I mean, that, that's intense. The great thing is that the mama was, uh, was a coral glow, so. We have a 50-50 chance of getting uh, males and females. Maybe I'll sex these. Let's take a look. I just sexed him. Two females. So I'll probably be selling uh, at least one of them. Maybe both of them. So I kept back um, I kept back some stuff from last year. So if you guys are interested, you know, once we get these guys feeding, I got two females, Coral Glow Mandarins. There's a male banana mandarin or i think it's a banana pastel mandarin actually that i have from last year he's uh, obviously got it getting his spots on him but you can see i mean he's got a lot of orange in him too he's i don't think he's as bright and he didn't look like those those other guys when he was born last year he always had the orange highlights on him but i don't see the um the same intense red coloring that i see from this year's clutch here that I just showed you. He doesn't want to stay still there. He wants to be a pain in the neck. Let's see if we can get him over here. Put him in this little box here. Okay. There he is. Now, once again, you can if you if you zoom in here, you can see he's got a lot of orange intensity in him. And that's that mandarin in there, but he does not have the same intensity. Now, granted, he's also pastel, and he 
has faded a little as he got older, as all do. But he's kept a lot more intensity than most bananas do because of that Mandarin influence. You can just see like the, look at that. It looks like someone took a highlighter and just, and just highlighted him. He's still, actually still available. Um, so I have another male I'm keeping. It's also Mandarin. And you never know, I might keep them. I might try to breed them also. You never have too many Mandarin bananas, right? But you can see the definite difference. The other ones were really extremely red. Here's a banana sugar pastel Mandarin from last year. That's also Paradox. This was my holdback female growing her up. You can see, look, look at the, look at that little outline. That's, that's your Mandarin influence there. You can just see it. Sugar is a great, one of the most, I think, underrated morphs anyway. Look at all that white in there. But mix that sugar, banana, pastel, and then you got the Mandarin in there. Wow. So this is a banana line and you see a lot of interesting, you know, highlighting oranges, and stuff like that in there, but there's also sugar in here, so it's not really a good comparison to the other banana mandarins or coral glow mandarins. That's why I took the other one out. But you can see the difference. You know when you got a mandarin mixed with a banana, it just intensifies that banana so much, or the coral glow. But like I said, I'm interested to see how that coral glow. Now I sold a coral glow mandarin pastel last year, male, to. Uh, someone who bought it for me. It was, it was exquisite. I almost, I really was going to keep it, but it was, it was amazing. And this person really wanted it. So I, I sold it, but I kept this female back. So I think the crawl glow has some definite magic with the Mandarin gene, but the banana obviously looks awesome too. And since we're showing off Mandarin stuff, I might as well pull out this whole back male from last year that this is the one I really kept. It was kind of cool. This is a spider pinstripe, well, some, you know, we call that a spinner, pastel, mandarin, that's also possible fire. Um, I can't tell if it's fire again. It's definitely mandarin, and things keep getting orange, more and more orange. Um, the spider pinstripe mandarin, really, I really like this, this combo. It almost, I mean, it, it's about as orange as you get. Look at the head. I'd love to clean this up with a Super Mandarin. Imagine this in Super Mandarin, Super Mandarin, Pinstripe, and Spider, and then the fire in there. I, I think there is fire in there because it, it's pretty extremely, you know, orange. But fire might clean this up a little. I don't, the funny thing is I don't have a real comparison of another one to really compare it to, so I'm just calling it possible. We'll see, you know, we'll see when I breed them out. He's definitely going to breed this year for me. I'm definitely going to put him into the breeding program. I mean, I love that head. I mean, look at that. That's a really nice looking snake. Really nice coloring. You know? For a ball python, great color. Once again, it's really the Mandarin that made this because we, we know what a spinner looks like. We know what a spinner pastel looks like. They're not this extreme. This is, I mean, this is way, way, way more. And so this is just showing you some of the potential of this Mandarin gene. And I'm really excited. I, I wish I could have gotten into some more things. Some of the clutches didn't go this year, but um, we'll see. I showed you that possible super Mandarin that I produced. I'm just waiting for him to shed out so I can see, you know, what exactly we got. But um, for now, we'll just look at these and I'll keep you guys updated on the project. That's it for today here at Monday morning at Muscle Serpents Daily. I hope you guys enjoyed looking at that beautiful Mandarin uh, Coral Glow Clutch. Hopefully you guys enjoy some of the drama that goes on on a regular basis in a snake room. You know, sometimes you get escapees. If you have your snake room set up correctly, however, then you don't have to worry about it. And of course, it's always great to see a little uh, blue tongue skink chowing down, you know, on a Monday morning here at Muscle Serpents Daily. And we got a little Azanthic up there, boy, too. Enjoying his little breakfast. And I'm going to go edit some video, and uh, hopefully you guys enjoy the rest of your Monday, and I'll see you back tomorrow, of course. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, like this video, turn on your notifications, and tell your friends about it. And I'll be back tomorrow.